Hi, Reject Nation. I'm Greg Alba. I'm John Humphrey. I'm Perry Nemiroff. Perry Nemiroff here with our first movie review together, and we're gonna cover the awesome Netflix movie. Is it Netflix all around the world? I don't That's know. That's a good question, actually. I, I think they acquired it, so I couldn't tell you for sure. Well, I don't think they produced it outright. For us Americans, the night comes for us. Netflix original. <laughs> Before we go into this, I want to say thank you to everyone who's been following us on our Patreon page. Over there, we do weekly Q&As. We also do TV show reactions for many a show. That includes My Hero Academia, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, Attack on Titan, Gotham, Riverdale, and Supernatural. And John does a lot of music video coverage. And we got plenty of other reward tiers. So thank you to everyone who's been following us on our Patreon page. You guys rock. And Perry Nemiroff, make sure to go check out her YouTube channel as well. Fantastic stuff, people. Now that we've got all the bullshit out of the way, let's talk about The Night Comes For Us. Guys, general consensus on the film. What do you think? Perry, you go first. Do you guys curse on these videos? Can Suck you? Fuck yeah, there like, will be okay. maybe sometimes. Sometimes, it depends. <laughs> Say like, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> this movie is batshit crazy. And even though because of the Raid movies, I fully expected every ounce of violence, blood, kick ass or yeah. re, whatever I'm gonna call it. Every single time I got to a new sequence and they took it to a new extreme, I'm like, no way, they didn't do it. They did that, yeah. they did that too. Yeah. I was very, very impressed. I was really impressed with it too because I'm a huge fan of the first two Raid films for sure. What this felt like to me, cause this is from the director and uh, I know I'm gonna say his name. Timo. I'm gonna Timo. say it perfectly correctly here. Here's the proper way to pronounce it. Tamao Tahana Tonto. <laughs> so, just, yeah, that's how you guys say it. If you guys are ever doing reviews of this guy's work, <laughs> Tamao Tahana Tonto. Chijanto? John, I'm the brown one in this video. Yeah, you believe you me, it, I know. <laughs> All right. And he did the movie like Headshot and it was a killer's. This felt like his movie combined with the fight scenes that you would have gotten in the raid. And I say his movie especially because it's like the raid choreography, but, but, but exceptionally more gory. The raid films are violent, yes. but in this movie, and there'll be spoilers in here, I was like, whoa! Yeah. I don't remember this kind of action in the raid movies. This is insane. <laughs> there is a whole other level of gore to the violence across the spectrum of this movie. And that's probably the most striking thing about it is just how many splatters. And it looked mm -hmm. like they got at least some practical blood in there just splattered everywhere. And this is not, to me at least, this is not perhaps my favorite of their films, but it's hard to deny that almost everything is impressively orchestrated about yeah. it. It's like the story is a bit familiar and I'm used to this kind of movie from them now. I'm, I understand what this group's energy is like. However, especially when there's action happening, you're just locked on the screen being bowled over by whatever horrific thing you're about well, to see. To me, I thought it was a cool blend because uh, sometimes you see movies with fight scenes where it's too hyper edited. You're like, mm -hmm. I can't even tell what's going on. I want to just be able to pay attention to the performers and then sometimes it's like they keep the shots smooth which is cool because you can just watch the fight scenes go on and here it seemed like for every single move that the performers had to do they had a shot perfectly designed yeah. perfectly yeah. symmetrical in mind it kind of reminded me of upgrade yeah, and, yeah. and the way how the camera always they follows would, the movements of when if like someone's the most there's significant there's one particular impact, shot yeah. that caught my eye that felt like an upgrade shot it's when they're in the uh the police van in the back and yeah. he like put someone over the bench yeah it's like the camera yeah, and moves it goes so when he perfectly. snaps yeah. the yeah. 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 It, were, it looks incredible. I mean, really, every single thing, you said it, every single thing in this is orchestrated to such a perfect degree that I kind of can't believe it, especially because these actors are covered in blood the entire time, <laughs> yeah. too. It's yeah. not like, they do come across as a little bit superhuman, but it's not like anybody ever, like, washes their hands clean and, like, comes out perfectly quaffed yeah. or anything after. It's like, once the first fight happens, you see the battle scars on them, the rest to the way through. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, there feels like there's so little like excess Hollywood beef. It's like you're watching these guys really fight, really moving yeah. Yeah. so fast, really doing these hits that look like hits. And so even though, yeah, there's certain times where you're like, I gotta probably be dead by now. You're like, I'm still watching just two guys and some blood, so yeah. it's still <laughs> convincing, you know? I mean, beyond the blood though, I can't emphasize this enough. It's a gory film. Yes. Yeah. Like there's, you see action films where you're like, it's gory. I'm like, no, this is like 
horror movie gore status with the amount of different ways people are sliced. First fight with Joe Taslim when he when he's fighting the people in the in the kitchen, the, the butchery butcher shop. shop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, one first guy who gets his cheek slashed. Yep. I, I hate that in general in movies. <laughs> when it happens, I'm like, whoa! There yeah. were times I was afraid to watch the movie yeah. because I was afraid of what was going to be shown next in the film. But I man, might have been rewatching the third act of this while I was in the office the other day, and it's like, even though I had already seen it, I wish someone was doing a reaction video of yeah. me watching the end of this because every single time I'm like, oh, that's that's yeah. I don't look at anything. Yeah. Like, weirdly enough, John and I were saying, like, should we do a reaction to this? Can't determine that because we hadn't seen the movie. Yeah. So, but we were like, yeah, you know what? Uh, let's not, just in case. I watched this with my girlfriend, and then I was literally reacting the whole time I was oh, watching yeah. this movie. I was, I was like, like, fuck, we should have done a reaction to this movie. I watched <laughs> this alone. There were times when I was talking to myself. Because <laughs> yeah. I read a review that compared, the, the, that likened this to, like, Jackie Chan meets John Rambo in the approach to action. Just yeah. the amount of objects around yeah. that get grabbed yeah. and used in clever ways and sometimes it's not even an object sometimes it's just like a hunk of nasty wood or something yeah. and they always find ways of yeah like you've seen so many fights and so much action across cinema and yet they seem like they hone in on what's the most painful place on your arm to get stabbed <laughs> yeah. or your head to get oh, stabbed there's one in or... particular that I'm picturing now that you said your arm the one where she the girl yeah. the operator uh, that one yeah. and like stabs and stuff like yeah. it is it's bonkers and kind of funny but also horrifying and really like dark yeah. and grungy like it's it's so multifaceted just as an action spectacle alone no story at all, like, aside. Well, but yes. even without the story yeah. and a ton of action, it's not a hollow experience of no, action. No, like, no, one no. thing that they do really well, which is why I think they can go with such a simple story like this, you like the characters. You like them all, especially when they begin mm. with that group of them together. Bob, let's give Bobby a shout-out. Bobby! Yeah. Bobby! My boy Bobby! Bobby. Bobby. Yeah. My boy Bobby <laughs> kicked ass, and he was just, like, such a cool, loyal yes. guy. I really dug his performance That's in this. That's one see, of my favorite fights of the movie yeah. is, is, is his uh, yeah fight. I guess I do have an issue with the film though was that I didn't need the story to be something groundbreaking or entirely unique but I'll admit when there wasn't action I was intermittently kind of bored with the movie. I wasn't always engaged. That could just be my personal opinion on the film. It's weird. Joe Taslim's the main character and when he's fighting, it's amazing. Maybe because it makes sense where his character's going through and like the situation he's in, why he'd be so serious the whole time. But everyone else seemed to have more life to their performances than he did. Cause he had the very like stoic thing. Everything about the plot was so generic. When it comes to the character stuff, I feel like I, I do get what you're getting at with Joe Taslim. Cause I feel like the thing about this movie, the raid movies, the, what this group kind of tends to do is populate their movies with fight scenes centered around eccentric, colorful characters. Mm -hmm. This movie is full of them. I feel like Joe Taslim is the one character who's not that eccentric or colorful as compared to almost everyone else. Yeah. And it's also a very immediate movie too. And it, it is that thing of, I feel like it's a well, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just have to roll it well. And I feel like this movie rolls its wheel pretty well, but it is like a hyper familiar triad crime story. The way I read into his behavior though was that so much of his experience his life was almost sucked out of him it's yeah. like he was mm -hmm. pushed to the breaking point and that's why he was like a stone cold man yeah. on a mission oh no like i get what you guys are saying i completely agree with the choices he had for the performance the story itself outside of the action that i didn't really find too engaging and then i found myself going i'm least interested in joe taslim for some reason for mm -hmm. some reason i was just least interested in him but i'm not like dogging on the film at all because the main thing you show up for this movie for is the thrills and the action sequences so. and fortunately it's not like it's intermittent it's a lot of the movie it's like oh, a huge yeah. chunk of the film. I mean, this movie is is a bunch of action scenes stitched together by a few bits of story context. And that's yeah. really all it needs to and, be. And what you were saying about it not being hollow, Perry, is something that I completely admire about it because it wasn't, I don't know, like you know when you watch a Transformers film <laughs> and you're like, I could care less yes. about the action too because the, the, everything around the action is so dull already that I don't even care about the action. In this movie, I'm not saying that it has that level of effect with the story. Like, I think the story was serviced enough that when the action was there I was completely gripped and felt the intensity of the situation. I absolutely would recommend this movie. The action just kept getting better and better. It wasn't like you start off strong and then it kind of goes whatever from there. It just escalatingly got more crazy.
crazy as it kept going. All the way from, all right, you get a cool fight where Rico Wise shoves a ball in the guy's mouth. Then you get the butcher fight. And then you get the crazy fight when they're all attacking the friends and Joe Taslim's gone. Yeah. And they just yeah. don't stop coming. They just keep showing up. Oh, man. And, and when you get the trio of female assassins all going yes. I think each that other might have been my favorite sequence of the- that, sequence. that probably got the biggest audible reaction out of me, too. One particular shot where I'm like, no, you just did that, didn't you? Which, which shot? We can have a little bit of spoilers. I, we can? This yeah. All right. This movie's the, been out for two more, weeks on the, Netflix. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, the fingers. fingers. It's when they wrap her little stringy yes. thing around her. You get that moment with her where she knows what's about to happen, and she's just screwed. Yeah. and then it does and it's still oh, well, creep that, me out. That's what I mean. It's like the ingenuity of things we've seen before but enhanced. We've all seen, you know, metal wires in films before in action movies but the way they use it is kind of like a whip of ways. Well, it's also smart because they, they use it correctly for her character before and it hurts when you see her yes. use it. So then when it's used on her, it yes. has like 10 times the effect. Yes, exactly. Julia Stell, who's in the raid too as a Hammer Girl and she plays the operator. But that's what I mean by story part. It's like that a little bit of those elements were kind of confusing to me. I, was, I wasn't exactly sure who she was. And at one point, it, the movie kind of treated it like she was a figment of his imagination because there's one point where Joe Taz yeah. was talking to her and then she's she Batman. She, 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 yeah, she Batman's him. And I'm like, oh wait, was this part of his imagination? That exact thing he crossed my mind you. when I watched that scene. And like, I, oh. I think what they meant was that she just like pieced oh, out. Yeah. yeah. Not, but, but for a minute, I stopped and I thought, like, is he just picturing, imagining Yeah, she's is this there? some ex-girlfriend or something from me? Yeah, I was like, really? conscience? <laughs> and then she gun? came back and I was like, oh, never mind, she's yeah. some person. <laughs> yeah. She's just super stealthy. Oh, yeah, no, she she's really cool in the film. But that finale fight is one of the best fights I have ever seen. One thing you always count on these guys for is their finale fights. Yeah. <laughs> All like 20 minutes of them. Yeah. <laughs> because when Iku Weiss and Joe Tasm are fighting each other, by the time you get to the final kill moments, oh. you're like, they're both gonna die, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. They're just gonna murder each other. Like aren't? literally yeah. bloody pulp. <laughs> because I thought of the raid too when Iku Weiss fights that one dude. Iku Weiss pretty much handles business in that fight. Like he gets hit a few times, gets cut a couple times, but he's, he's primarily handling it. Here, you're like, you're putting two icons up against each other. This better look as equal of a fight as possible. By the time you get to the final moments of who dies, you're just like, wow, they you're, are, they're gonna bleed hurting. out. You're yeah, it's so bad. It's, it, it's, and it's disgusting. It's yeah. disgusting, but fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> like this is, this is a super impressive movie. And I remember you were on movie fights and you argued against this. I remember that. I did, yeah, I did. Argue. Well, um, I would still- You weren't arguing about he, what the movie so was. So it's like yeah. in movie fights, you're, you're playing to win. You're yeah. not really playing necessarily based on your own feelings. And I was rooting for this movie to do well, but still, even after seeing it, and this kind of disappoints me a little bit, I don't think it's ever going to have that level of success that we were arguing for yeah. on that show, even though this is an incredible feat that should be seen yeah. by anybody who admires even the slightest degree of action in a movie. Like, yeah. Netflix has this weird array. You watch the movie sometimes, and you're like, makes sense why this is on Netflix. And then there's the other side where you're like, why is this on Netflix and not well, in the theaters? Wait <laughs> you know? until you see Roma. You're going to be asking yeah. that question all yeah. over again. Okay. If I were to give it a rating, what's your rating system? The Deweys. What's it's, the Deweys? It's, uh, <laughs> it's out of five Deweys. And you can yeah. do half Deweys too. Dewey uh, is Dewey Decimal Movie is, Scale is the uh, famous country singer Dewey Cox. In case it's you guys not know. as funny. <laughs> <laughs> that is also not what Deputy Dewey is named after. He is a scream cat. Yeah, it's in your fanfic where Dewey Cox becomes a deputy. Yeah. Yeah. Dewey her cat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I were to give this a certain rating of Deweys, I would, I would give it a, four, a solid four out of five okay. for me. I'm not going five Deweys. I'm going, I'm going four. Six. I'm going four out of five Deweys yeah. as well. Four out of five Deweys. Yeah. I think I'm to meet y'all there because I you know part of me wants to go like that's just a crime film I'd maybe give it a three and a half but just the ingenuity of the action is so incredible yeah that I will go full four for that like for where you're gonna watch it for mm -hmm. you're gonna get everything you want yeah this is like an American from what I understand an American production even though they shot in Indonesia it's mostly in Indonesia and the money came from America I am a little surprised that you know, just Netflix is where it's at hmm. for this, but you know, hopefully maybe now that they've crossed over into the States, plus that whatever it was cameo in The Force Awakens, like I would love to see them hit the bigger yeah. scale American cinema market Dude. because they could pack a theater and to see stuff like that on a big screen is all the more intense, you know? Guys, Mile 22 was awesome and was a major hit. It was satisfying to everyone. Go watch Mile 22 yeah. now. <laughs>
<laughs> hey guys, you can subscribe to the Reject Nation. Oh, I don't know. I mean, YouTube question. Did you like the night comes for us? What yeah. found object would you most like to be stabbed in the face with? <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. Subscribe to the Reject Nation. Click that notification bell. Harry Nemiroff, her YouTube channel is fantastic. Seriously, guys. Go check it out right away. Shout out to Joshua Lucero over at our Patreon. Josh. Joshua Lucero is a really, really awesome dude all the way from the Hawaii's. And I gave him a shout out a few weeks ago and I sent it over to him. And I'm giving you another shout out because he didn't reply to me. And now I'm worried I've upset you, yet you're still pledged to our Patreon page. I would just like it if you can relieve the anxiety and worry and the tension that I'm like all freaked out about it. Like, are you mad at me? By just replying to me. And that's all I need. Shout out.